All right, then welcome back everyone. That's all this question. Exciting bets. Now this is a classical question on number theory and uh, tests of how well do you know GCD. So I believe uh, this would be a little bit trickier question if you are if you don't understand truly how GCD works. But it's fine. Like uh, you should be encountering such type of questions. That's how you learn and grow. Right. So I hope you read the question once, but I'll quickly read it for you. So what they've defined is they've defined this excitement. Uh, what is this excitement is? It's basically GCD of two numbers A and B. Right. So initially uh, we are given two numbers. If I'm not wrong, see we are given two numbers A and B. And we have defined something called as an excitement and we are trying to maximize it. What is excitement? Excitement is simply GCD of these two numbers and we are trying to maximize it by doing some operations. And what are those operations? Either increase both A and B by 1, A and B by 1 and decrease both A and B by, B by 1. Okay, this operation can only be performed if both A and B are greater than 0. Yeah, so we have to make sure that uh, A and B both uh, stay positive. They cannot become 0. Fine, right? so that's that. So we have only two operations, increase both A and B by, A and B by 1 or decrease both A and B by 1. So the question, if I want to summarize it, what they are, what they have given is, they have given us two integers, a and b, and what we want to do is we want to maximize the GCD. We want to maximize the GCD of these two numbers. So these two are positive, like non-negative integers that they have given, and we want to maximize GCD of a and b by doing just two operations. Basically, now we have only two types of operations using which we can maximize the GCD. One type of operation is increase both a and b by one, and the second type of operation is decrease both a and b by one. Right? So this is what the operation is, and what they are asking is, uh, first print the maximum excitement that you can get. And what is the minimum number of operations that you used to achieve it, right? So in one operation, either you increase both by one or decrease both by one, right? So this is one operation they have. And if you can get the infinite excitement, print zero. Now, when you look at infinite excitement, guys, so if the numbers are same, let's say if both the numbers are same, let's say seven, seven, of course, you can increment them. Like you can perform uh, this operation, increase by one, as many number of times as possible, right? Seven, 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 then eight, eight, then nine, nine, ten, ten, eleven, eleven, twelve, twelve, so on, right? If both numbers are same, you can get infinite excitement. So in that case, uh, print zero, zero. So zero, zero is uh, saying uh, you can get infinite excitement. So let me write down here. We have two integers, a and b, and both are greater than or equals to zero. And I guess the constraints are pretty high, so you better use long, long here. Fine. And what we need to find out is, what is the maximum value of GCD that you can get? So we have to maximize this. What is the maximum value of GCD you can get? And the minimum number of operation, right? So basically, this is what we are after. Maximum value of this GCD of a, b, and minimum number of operations. Fine. That's what you want to do. Now, this question relies on a very peculiar property of GCD. If you can, uh, figure out that property, then this question is done. Otherwise, uh, you're watching this video, right? If, if, since you're not able to figure out the property, uh, you're watching this video. Now, I'll try to uh, build up to that property, but let's see, uh, I'll try my best, but it's just purely observation based only, but I'll still try, okay? Don't worry. See, what they've asked is, they want to maximize the GCD, right? So one, one case we already figured out, right? If A equal equals to B, if both are same, of course, you can get maximum excitement. So maximum excitement is zero. And so basically, they have to print zero, zero, right? If you can get uh, the GCD to maximize, you can just print zero, zero. Okay, so this case we figured out, but if it is not the case, if a and b are not equal, if a and b are not equal, then what? If a and b are not equal, then of course one will be greater, one will be smaller, right? One will be greater, one will be smaller. Okay, what next? See, I want to maximize the GCD. Now, GCD is a very like there are many properties of GCD, but how can you? You should think about the properties which bounds the GCD. You should think about the properties which bounds the GCD. If you remember in one of the 800 related questions, we figured out that GCD of AB is less than equals to GCD of ABC. GCD of ABC is less than equal to GCD of ABCD, right? So you should think about the properties which bound the GCD, right? Which bound the GCD to some point. That type of property you should think about here, right? So what properties uh, come to your mind? What properties come to your mind? The most uh, relevant property in this uh, example is if uh, let's say, if let's say uh, without loss of generality, if A is greater than B, if A is greater than B, GCD of AB is actually equal to GCD of A minus B, B. Okay, wait for it. Uh, why this property makes sense is why I why this property says that I'm bounding GCD by some value is hear me out. What are the operations? What are the operations? Either increment a and b by one or decrement a and b by one, right? So if you increment a by one or decrement b by one, what is not changing? Let's say you had elements like five five. You had elements like five six. If you decide to increment both of them, it will become six seven. If you decide to decrement, it will become four five. What is not changing? What is not changing? A minus b. Right? The difference between these two guys, the difference between these two guys is still one. So without loss of generality, I pick this A, right? So the bigger one is A. So if I decrease both of them or increase both of them, what is not changing? What is not changing? A minus B. A minus B. Right? That's why I thought about this property. If you want a proof for this property, I'll attach it after the end of the video because I don't know how many of you are interested in the proof. So after I have discussed the solution, I'll attach, like I'll discuss the proof of this property. Why GCD of AB is equal to GCD of A minus B, B when A is greater than B. But for now, why did I come to this property? Because after performing an operation, the difference A minus B is not changing. The difference A minus B is not changing. So what happened here, guys? You have fixated upon one thing in your GCD. 
right see what were what were you after you were after to maximize this gcd of ab right so it is same as it is same as maximizing gcd of a minus b b see this part is not changing that is important no matter how many operations you do this part is not changing this a minus b part is not changing and if a is not equal to b of course i am under the assumption here without loss of generality that a is always greater than b if it is not i'll make it okay so this assumption you keep in mind so this is the assumption i have uh, a is greater than b right so i was after maximizing gcd of a and b i figured out i figured out the operations are defined in a way that a minus b is not changing and i can write gcd of ab as gcd of a minus b b i can write and we know that this a minus b can never change so this is constant right so this is fixed you no matter what you do no matter how many operations you perform this a minus b won't change so only thing that you can change is b only thing that you can change is b right and we, what we want is we want to maximize you want to maximize the gcd and since one of the guys is fixed here one of the guys is fixed here you can never go beyond that you can never go beyond that so this is the maximum gcd that we can achieve this is the maximum gcd we can achieve right okay guys it's very simple gcd of ab can be written as gcd of a minus bb right and the nature of our operations is such that this a minus b is never going to change so this thing is fixed and now if you want to maximize this what is the maximum value of gcd you can get the gcd of gcd you can get of course a minus b you cannot go beyond it this is the maximum value that you can achieve right so if you are confused let's take some examples let's say this was 7 or maybe let's say this was 3 this b can be greater or uh, b can be equal or b can be plus in all of these cases you see one thing here here like i'm not thinking on minimum number of operations right now so this 7 can be brought down to 3 This three is three, fine. So the GCD, like since the GCD cannot be increased beyond, GCD cannot be increased beyond. And here, of course, I'll increase two to three. So all in all, what I'm saying is, see, anyway, if B is greater than or equal to, you have to brought down B. You have to, uh, you have to subtract some. Sometimes you have to up, decrease the value of B some number of times, right? And here, you have to increase the value of B one number of times, fine. Of course, both A and B, but the A minus B is not changing, right? Okay, now so figure out one thing. The maximum GCD that you can achieve is A minus B. So let me just write it down. So let me just call it as delta. Delta is A minus B. Okay, so this is the equation finally, right? So GCD of a minus b b, and what are the operations we have? Uh, increment this b by one. So do b equals to b plus one, or do b equals to b minus one? Frankly, we are doing uh, incrementing both a and b, but since a and b, since uh, a minus b is not changing, I can write my operation now as b equals to b plus one or b equals to b minus one, right? Fine. But when I am saying I am doing b equals to b plus one, I am actually incrementing both, but this part is not changing. Okay. So how can you? Uh, we figured out uh, one case. So what will be the maximum excitement that we can get so one part of the puzzle piece is solved so if a is greater than b the maximum excitement that you can get is delta a minus b now what remains is calculating the minimum number of operation just take some examples and you'll be able to guess it so let's just take uh, say the value of a minus b was a uh, some 10 okay and the uh, value of b was uh, let's say 17 value of b was 70 so how can you make sure that the gcd of the gcd so this is fixed right the so 10 is fixed now how can i increment or decrement this 17 such that uh, the gcd becomes 10 Of course, I have to make sure that this 17 uh, is a multiple of 10, right? So either uh, I convert this 17 to 10, or I convert this 17 to 20. Any of this works. Any of this works. Uh, why none of this works? See, what I have found out is I have found out the nearest multiples of 10, right, in 17's vicinity. So what is the distance? Basically, I am not concerned about those multiples. I am concerned about the distance. So the nearest multiple of 10 uh, behind is a seven distance apart, and the another nearest multiple. So the previous multiple of 10 is seven distance apart, and the next multiple of 10 here is a uh, three distance apart. Right? Why three distance apart? Of course, you can perform three operation, convert this seven into twenty. And why the previous multiple of ten is a uh, seven distance apart? You can of course subtract uh, one seven number of times. You can go to ten. Right? So which one you pick? Of course, you're going to pick this one. Right? So you're going to pick this three. Right? So let's take one more example. Uh, don't worry, it's very easy actually. Uh, I'm taking time while explaining it, but uh, if you do it yourself, it will be very easy. Let's just say it was a uh, instead of seventeen, uh, it was something like this. It was thirteen. It was thirteen. Now, okay, it's better if I just take example below only. Yeah, let's say it was thirteen. So what do we do? We want to make uh, the GCD of 10 and uh, 13 to be 10, right? Because 10 is the maximum you can get. But the operation that you have is you can either increment or decrement the value of 13. Just find out the nearest multiples of 10. It will be 10 and 20. So what is the distance? This distance is 3. This distance is 7. Which one will pick? You will pick this 3. Okay, that's what you're going to pick. So you are basically going to find out uh, what is the distance between the nearest multiple. You are going to find out the distance between two multiples of 10. And uh, the minimum of those will be your answer. And how are you going to finding this uh, multiple? So how how did this seven came here? Seventeen mod ten, right? Seven B mod delta. And how did this three came? See, this seven is the remainder you got when you divided seventeen by ten, right? So you were seven distance apart from its previous multiple. What does it say? You are three multiples apart from its next multiple. So this would be ten minus seventeen mod ten, right? Will ten minus seven? Okay, <laughs> you'll get it. Don't worry. So thirteen, right? So you are 
what is this how did you get 3 here it is simply 13 mod 10 13 mod 10 so you are basically 3 distance apart you are basically 3 distance apart from its previous multiple previous 10 multiple so you of course 7 distance apart from its next multiple so it is 10 minus 13 mod 10 right if i want to concretize it if i want to concretize it you are here finding minimum of minimum of 17 mod 10 what is 17 b mod delta and delta minus b mod delta that's what you're doing and it it won't hold true when like it will also hold true where b is less than uh b less than equals to uh this a minus b okay if you want to see an example i can show you don't worry uh, let me just uh make this here i'm going to take an example here let's just say uh, this was equal to 10. if it is equal to 10 then uh 10 mod 10 is 0 10 mod 10 is 0 and minimum of minimum of 0 and 10 is going to be 0 right you don't need to do any operation right so 10 mod 10 is 0 and 10 minus 10 mod 10 so the nearest multiple so nearest multiple is here only and the next nearest multiple is what where is the next multiple it will be 20 or 0 whichever right so that's that and uh let's take one more example just for your clarity uh, when b is less than 10 so it will be let's say 7 7 so 7 mod 10 is 7 so the previous multiple which is 0 is 7 distance apart and 10 minus 7 10 minus 7 right delta minus b mod delta is 3 distance apart so that's what it works for when b is uh, greater than b is less than and of course for equal to it works so in this case you're going to pick this right so just by making some observations so uh, we are able to figure out uh, this is what our answer is this is basically the minimum number of moves right so these are the minimum number of moves if you forgot what we are after okay so that's about the question okay so let's end the video by quickly summarizing the question and uh, looking at the code the code is pretty straightforward so i didn't think it's better for you to uh, watch me live code it so first things first uh, what we are after we are after to we wanted to maximize this guy the CD of AB, where AB were both greater than equals to 0, but since the constraints were pretty high, I had to take them, take them as a long long. So I just took the input here, fine. And now, if they both were equal, of course we can achieve, uh, like we can achieve the maximum DCD, like we can achieve infinite DCD, right? We are just going to keep on incrementing them. So in that case, I'm just going to print 0, 0 because that's what the question asked. If they're equal, then maximum excitement, uh, like we have to print 0, 0, fine. Otherwise, otherwise, we figured out that DCD of AB can be written as DCD of A minus B, B. Why did I think about this? Because the nature of our operations was such that a minus b wasn't changing and this property might help this property might help and of course this probably only holds true when uh, a is greater than b so first i'm just uh, making sure that a is always greater than b, right i'm just if a is less than b i'm, I'm just gonna stop it so this if tag is simply making sure that a is always greater than b fine so that's that and then i'm gonna find out so if this a minus b is fixed what it says is your gcd can never go beyond a minus b so that is a maximum value of gcd that you can get right so this is a maximum value of gcd you can get so first we are going to print the maximum value of gcd that you can get delta a minus b right and what is the minimum number of operation what is the minimum number of operation the minimum number of operation you have to find out what you have to do is from b just find out uh, where are the multiples just find out the previous multiple of delta so from b you have to figure out the previous multiple of delta and the next multiple of delta and wherever the distance is minimum you just pick it and that distance can be simply find out like b mod delta and delta minus b mod delta so that i don't remember this formula guys i just look at the examples and i was able to see okay so the previous multiple is at distance b mod delta and the next multiple is distance delta minus b mod delta okay so nothing is in my head i just look at the examples and i was able to figure out okay so these are the minimum number of operations we have and uh, yeah that's that uh, i hope you got something out of this video i'll i was able to i was i wanted to discuss the proof of uh, why gcd of ab is equal to gcd of a minus b but i think the video is already getting a little bit longer so i'll attach the proof uh, in the description box of the video so there is a link it's a very simple proof frankly you'll understand it don't worry uh, but yeah that's that i'll thank you for watching i'll see you in the next one